into match day number two, we go now over in this year's Europa Conference League with the likes of Chelsea and Fiorentina getting off to the perfect possible start. But can they make it? Two wins out of two. We're going to take a little look next. <laughs> That's right, folks. Back once again on a preview. Today it's all about match day number two in this year's Conference League, and we'll get to it in a second. Of course, if you knew where you've been, smash your subscribe button. You want to stop shop for Europa Conference League, Blackburn Rovers, Wolf Football. We're going to all here under one Ruski. That's right. Perfect start so far for Premier League's uh, very own Chelsea. But will they get their second successive win in this year's tournament? We'll take a little look at it in a second. Of course, big shout out to the VIPs, the other Patreons. You know who you are. And again, big shout out to the members. You know who you are. But what we're going to do now is turn the clocks back to match number one, uh, review those picks, of course, and then kick on forward to the second round of games to see who's going to come out on top. Alrighty then, folks, here we go. I turn the clock back to match day number one. Uh, and these were the games and my picks. My picks are on the left, the real deals on the right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna plow plow through this one here quick. Uh, Rapid Vienna with a big 2-1 win over Bashakia over in Turkey. A Portuguese outfit, Victoria. They came out on top of the 3-1 win over NK Silesia. Uh One of the surprises was Legia Walsall's victory over Real Betis. Big 1-0 win for them. I went with the 2-1 win myself. Mulder did beat Lana, of course, of Northern Ireland. 3-0 win there. Heidenheim did beat Olympia uh, Ljubljana there. 2-1 winners over in Germany. The Cypriots, Armenia Nicosia coming out on top of the 4-0 win over Vikang Ur. FK Astania also picking up a win over back up to Pola. Circle Bruges with a big 6-2 win over FC St. Gallen of the Switzerland. Meanwhile, Hearts uh, of Midlovian, 2-1 winners over Dynamo Minsk. Uh, Noah picked up a big 2 uh, near win in their match. Chelsea did a, a bit of a double, well not double, uh, a thumping of uh, Ghent 4-2 in a 6 goal. Bobby Dazzler over in Stamford Bridge. Copenhagen lost to Bayerstock. Another shock that was. Fiorentina did uh, an easy job over TNS of Wales. Good, you know, not bad result there for the Welshies. Uh, last second, Dushka Gardens coming out with a 2-2 draw. I'm with a 1-1 draw myself. Shamrock Rovers did get a point against Apple Nicosia. Not too shabby when you think about it. Logano with a big 3-0 win over Helsinki. Uh, Panathinaikos could only get the draw against Borac. And Petro Kabdilus to Pathos of Cyprus to give themselves an amazing start thus far. In the tournament. So this is the state of play in the table right now. We're going to come at you right here, right now. We're showcasing the, the clubs that have got a lot of work to do. These guys are the bottom end of the table. They are nowhere near uh, anything right now. They've got to get themselves more points to get up the table. If they're going to continue their European adventure beyond this league phase. So right now, the likes of Petra Cup, HJK Helsinki, Ghent, of course, Real Betis, got to get some, uh, get their act together, and St. Gallen as well. So they're on no points and they're in trouble. Uh, then we move up the table to the teams that are going to be uh, duking out uh, in the playoff as it stands. It is very, very early days, of course. We will get a, a better look at the table uh, towards the end of the calendar year here, or actually over the next few weeks. Uh, but uh, currently, the likes of yeah, Hearts, uh, Heidenheim, Dusch Gardens, of course, Panathinaikos, uh, even Shamrock Rovers are in with a chance of getting themselves through to a, a playoff uh, for the uh, for the beyond the league phase then. Uh, but then we move up to the top eight. These guys are comfortably into the next round right now. They won't have no playoff. They, of course, will be there waiting in the wings to see who comes out on top uh, as the winner of those playoffs. But again, that's, of course, still got a lot of a lot of fuel in the tank and we could change it up a whole host of times before we get to the conclusion uh, for the next round. But... But these are your next round of games that it could all change up uh, on the conclusion of this match day over in the Conference League. So we're going to start from the top of the graphic and work our way down. All right then, folks, starting off at the top of the graphic, we are going to head over to Iceland, that's right. And it's Vikonjor Reykjavik up against Sussel Bruges, that's right. Now, these two clubs have never played each other and they'll lock horns over on the 24th of October 2024. Vikonjor, 58% form for them in all competitions and all venues up against Sussel Bruges on the back of 42% form for them coming at you on this one. Now, these two sides will play a game before this uh, in their domestic leagues, of course, so that uh, may uh, change a bit of form or a bit of priorities as well. But currently, as of recording, uh, Sussel Bruges on the back of that 3-0 loss to Antwerp, uh, and Vikango Rikovic on the back of a 2-2 draw against Stajnan uh, over in their de uh, 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 domestic leagues, of course. Bruges on the back of a success as well on this one. Got no odds as well, so we are coming at you a little bit earlier than usual. Uh, for this one, it's going to be difficult for Sussel Bruges, despite opening up with a 6-2 win over St. Gallen. I think they will have a little bit more difficulty here. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw over in Iceland. That's right.
From one Belgium club to another, it is Ghent taking on Mulder, that's right, of Norway, coming at you over on the 24th of October. Now, these two clubs have played twice since 2022. I'll talk about that in a minute. Ghent on the back of 58% uh, uh, form as of recording, uh, just one win last four. Up against Mulder, who are unbeaten in at least the last six games, picking up five wins and a draw to boot. Now, they did play twice back in 2022. It was in the Conference League as well. Ghent coming out on top. Uh, with the back-to-back -back clean sheets against Mulder and an impressive 4-0 win the last time they played over in Belgium. Again, uh, the Belgian side coming into on the back of a draw against Central Dents in the Juniper League over in Belgium. Mulder being Lillstrom over in their respective league, uh, of course. Uh, but again, games happening before this. This one, again, could sway things a little bit. But it's going to be difficult with this one to call us again. Uh, and I am leaning towards a 2-1 win for Ghent to have a repeat uh, of their successes last time around in Belgium in this competition. And, of course, the first loss for Molda in some time. Head over to Sweden now as Douche Gardens take on Victor Guadamares. That's right, coming at you also same day, 24th of October. Douche Gardens on 58% form for them right now. They are unbeaten in the last five matches. They currently sit 16th in this respective league. Up against Guadamares, who up there flying high in 7th with just one defeat in the last six matches. They never play each other, but coming into this, Guadamares on the back of a 2-2 draw against Boa Vista in the Portuguese top five. Douche Gardens with a big 6-1 win over, over Jadafala in the old Swiss League Cup there. Uh, again, both are going to be in action prior to this. And of course, it could also have some bearing on this one. Uh, it's a difficult place to go for Victoria here uh, over in the Swed. Uh, I think I'm going to go with a new new draw. You're sitting on the fence somewhat in this one over in Sweden. From the nor uh, the uh, Scandinavian regions, we're off to the uh, Mediterranean now as we get uh, Apel Nicosia as they take on Borak Banyoluka now. Of course, Apel Nicosia currently find themselves 18th in their table. That is the Conference League uh, without a win in the last three matches. Up against Borak Banyoluka, who are in 20th. Both clubs coming in is on the back of one successive draw, which was a, which was last time around. Nicosia, though, on the back of a 1-0 loss to Lanaka. That's back in October the 6th. Banyaluka picking up a 2-1 win over Velez Mostar. That's right. And, of course, they are trying to build up on that 1-1 draw against Panthanaikos. Apoel with that away draw against Shamrock Rovers in Ireland. Uh, Borak Banyaluka probably going to struggle in this competition. Apoel Nicosia need to be winning these kinds of games over on their own turf. And I think they're going to lead towards a victory on this one. 2-0 win for the Sipri. They'll take that to the bank. Tap on over to Austria now as Rapid Vienna. They will take on FC Noah, the new boys to the scene. That's right, Noah. Uh, coming in, it's on the back of a win. They currently find themselves in that imp impressive eighth spot right now. Up against Rapid Vienna, who up to 10th, of course. Both communities on the back of opening day victories in this respective tournament. Rapid Vienna, though, are on 92% form for them right now, unbeaten in at least the last six games, and picked up uh, a cheeky 1-0 win of Altash in the Bundesliga prior to the international break. They'll look forward to this game, and of course got uh, Austrian uh, Bundesliga match against Hartberg to look forward to, where they're expected to win that game. Noah, on the flip side, last match was that match against Mlada Boashev over in the uh, Conference League here, uh, and again, anticipated to take on, actually, a couple of clubs before this match. It's actually quite a busy schedule for Noah, taking on Alashkat Yerevin and Van over in their respective league in their country there. Um, difficult one again, but I'm leaning towards Vienna to win this one. I think that unbeaten streak of 92% and more will be too much uh, for Noah to get anything out of this game. See you, by the way. We're off to Scotland now as Hearts take on a mini and Nicosia coming at you out of Scotland. Time Castle, the venue. Uh, of course, Scottish uh, Hearts are coming at you on 25% form for them right now. 10th in the table. They did pick up a cheeky day win. That's their only win in the last six matches. I mean, and Nicosia are sitting second right now uh, in this respective league. But they are coming at you right here right now as a recording on the back of a defeat. Again, these clubs have never played each other. But uh, Limassol did lose to Nicosia. Oh, sorry, Nicosia did lose to Limassol last time around over in the Cypriot League. Uh, but that 4-0 win for Nicosia over Viking Reykjavik has them top or next to top of the bloody pops. Haas, of course, with a cheeky 2-1 away win over at Dynamo Minsk, of course. But the worries in Scotland are giving them a bit of a headache here. Uh, of course, meaning Nicosia from Cyprus, I think they'll, uh, they, they will struggle to get anything out of this game. I think Haas at home. Uh, under this loyal fan base, will get them over the line, and of course, going to go with a two to win over at Tyne Castle in my eyes. Let's go over Kabungan Park over in St. Gallen in Switzerland. It's probably one of the 
tastier games uh, over in this competition. It's St. Gallen up against Fiorentina. St. Gallen not doing great right now, near the bottom of the pile, 35th after the 6-2 stomping, I think, by uh, uh, Paphos last time around. Up against Fiorentina, unbeaten in the last four, of course, eighth in the table, uh, currently with three points as well. Now, these two clubs are yet to play, but St. Gallen, of course, bouncing back with a 1-1 draw at Servette in the uh, Swiss League. Uh, prior to the international break. Fiorentina, good wins over the New Saints and AC Milan back-to-back -back home matches. Last time they were on the road, though, they could only muster a draw. That was against M. Pauli. Uh, in fact, the last couple of games on the road haven't resulted in much progress for them. St. Gallen at home might be the way forward here. They're unbeaten in the last couple of games, beating Zurich and then drawing with Servette. Uh, no odds on this one, but uh, I don't know. Difficult. Difficult one to call when leaning towards just a narrow, small baby win for Fiorentina. In the end, head over to the islands of Greece now as Panathinaikos take on Chelsea. That's right, Panathinaikos just won defeat in the last six. 50% form, they currently find themselves 18th in this Europa Conference League. Up against sixth place Chelsea, who look good to good, just look good right now. They are, of course, 92% form for them, winning five of the last six. Their last match was a draw against Nottingham Forest. Panathinaikos uh, did draw with Olympiacos most recently and actually been back-to-back -back draws, picking up a draw against Banja Luka last time around. Chelsea coming out on top of that 4-2 win over Ghent. Uh, they have a spicy wee game against Liverpool this weekend, which, of course, will uh, will cause them some problems, some headache, and maybe some uh, team rotation on this one. But I think, regardless of whether it's played at home or away, Chelsea, going to win this one. I'm going to go with a 2 0 win on the road uh, for the Blues. And over to where we going? Poland now as Bayerstock uh, take on Petro Cub coming at you this coming 24th of October. I've got to try and find this badger. There it is. AKA Jagalino. That's right. 75% uh, form for them right now. Attempt for the table. Three points thus far out of a perfect three. Uh, currently coming at you on the back of a draw against Legia. Walsall. Petro Cub Helsinki on the back of a 50% form for them right now. One, two, lost two and drawn two over the last six. And they did win last time around over Floresti in the domestic league there. Looking forward to the weekend they are uh, with Jagalonia expected to beat their opposition. Or are they? It's quite tight between them and Zaglula Lublin. Petro Cub Helsinki taking on Tiras the sheriff that is this weekend as well busy games for both uh sets of fans difficult one to call on this one it looks like i'm leaning towards a draw i am uh, yes i am one one in the end advantage petro cub you would think over to slovenia we had now a Silesia take on bashakir coming at you off a uh, turkey that's right uh which will uh, take full advantage this match day currently bashakir are 23rd compared to Silesia's 29th in the respective europe conference league table Silesia on the back of 67 percent form for them right now just one win in three uh bashakir of course one win in four 58 percent form for them coming at you as well. They do come in this on the back of a draw. That's Ketaspor. That uh, was Bashakir. Salij beating Madabor in their top flight, which of course is monumental in their grand domestic adventure there. Uh, difficult one to call this one as well. I, I'm leaning towards Bashakir here, but uh, maybe just maybe Salij will get the upper hand over one of the Turkish's lesser known uh, big boys these days. And over in Northern Ireland now as we have a bit of a bit of a special game here. It's Lana of Northern Ireland against Shamrock Robins of Republic of Ireland. That's right. Coming at you over at Windsor Park. Lana on the back of uh, successive defeats. 67% form for them over the last six. Shamrock Rovers on the back of one defeat in the last six. Also 67% form for them right now. The Rovers, that's Shamrock. Uh, one point out of a possible three thus far. Lana did lose their first game. Uh, of course, I think it was against uh, it was against Mulder, that's right. Uh, coming at you over in Northern Ireland. Lana on the back of a 3-0 loss to Dungannon over in the Northern Irish League. Shamrock Rovers picking up a 2-0 win over Shelbourne last time around. Again, both are in busy action before this match. Tough one to call. I'm going to sit on the fence again on here. 1-1 one, one in the end. It's just a bit too close to call. Uh, and again, Shamrock Rovers will have another point in the bag to uh, maybe, just maybe, give them the, the dream of making it through to at least the playoff. Over to Spain now as Real Betis take on Copenhagen in one of a ding-dong classic uh, coming at you uh, this coming match day of Real Betis. Not having the best of form domestically. Currently find themselves 42% form for them right now. Just one win in five. The 26 right now with zero points thus far. Copenhagen also won zero points uh, with 58% form for them right now. Back-to-back -back games without a win. They did draw with Silkborg most recently. Real Betis did lose to Sevilla most recently uh, over in La Liga. Both in very, very busy action prior to this as well. Uh, uh, and again, uh, what's, what's going to take priority uh, uh, with these personnel 
Will it be the league or will it be this competition? Uh, it's difficult to call, but Real Betis have been a bit shit thus far domestically. Uh, I think they might have a bit of an upper hand against Copenhagen here. Going to go with a big 3-1 win, which might flatter Real Betis in the end. Um, but Copenhagen need to bounce back and fast. Uh, especially when it comes back to home games for the Danish outfit. Meanwhile, over in Finland, it's HJK Helsinki. They're going to be up in action up against Dynamo Minsk. That is coming at you this Wednesday, uh, this Thursday as well, on the 24th of October. HJK Helsinki, without a win the last five, they're uh, towards the back end of this. 33rd, 33rd on the table with zero points up against Dynamo Minsk, who went four of the last five. They're on 67% form for them. Uh, and following on from that defeat to Hearts, they responded well with back-to-back -back wins. Uh, in the domestic league. Meanwhile, HCK Helsinki uh, did lose to Lugano uh, and, of course, followed that up with uh, another loss in their top flight. This actually makes it three games now without a goal for HCK Helsinki. Um, yeah, I think I'm, think I'm leaning towards uh, the hosts on this one to, to get something out of it. Go with another 1-1 one -one draw. I've got a few 1-1 one -on -one ones knocking around here, but it's the, I think this competition does have a lot of equal kind of teams that uh, there's so minimal, minimal uh, differences between the two sides. So uh, there's a lot of draws, but uh, there is also uh, some uh, breakaway clubs that realistically shouldn't be at this competition. They should be playing uh, in the Europa League or even higher than that. Go over to Slovenia we go as Olympic Lejlana take on Lasic coming at you out of Austria. That's right, uh, Lejlana. Uh, currently find themselves in 22nd in the table right now with uh, no wins so far. But it's Lasic who picked up a draw last time around. Now, Lejlan on the back of successive defeats. One was in this competition. They followed up with a 1-0 loss to Copa in the Slovenian top flight. Lasic, of course, unbeaten the last five right now. Uh, three wins and a couple of draws, including a 4-0 win last time around against Ostia Klagenfurt, one of the coolest names in town. Uh, no bookies odds here. Going to lean with a, with a home win here. 1-0 win, Lejlana taking it over in Slovenia. They're going to win those to keep themselves in this competition. Next up, we're actually going to go to England. That's right. We're on a new meadow over in uh, Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, the venue for the new Saints. They take on Astania. That's right. Coming at you from over in, where is that? Uh, is that to Kazakhstan? Uh, that is right. A new Saints currently find themselves 30th in the table with no points thus far. Astani did pick up a win last time around. They are hot to bloody trot right now. 92% form for them right now. Winning five of the last six. TNS, aka the New Saints. They, of course, picked up a couple of wins thus far in the last six, including a win last time around over Cardiff Met. Uh, they won 3 0 last time around. They will take on Flint Town uh, and Lagonan Town before they lock horns with Astania on the 24th. Uh, of October. Uh, meanwhile, Astania taking on, of course, Shakhtar Karagay uh, before they lock horns as well on this one. A couple of games before this. Um, but uh, yeah, leaning towards an away win on this one. I think Astania will be too big uh, for these boys uh, when when these two lock horns in a week or so. Head over to Chechia now as Melanda Boashev take on Lugano coming at you. 24th of October, Melanda Boashev, 42% form for them right now. Winless in five, goodness gracious me. Lugano, however, on the flip, unbeaten in six. That's right, 83% form for them right now, including a draw last time around against Zurich. Melanda Boashev are the draw kings themselves, picking up three draws the last four. Uh, drawing with Ostoravia uh, and uh, Pinson as well. But they do come into, uh, come into this on the back of successive goalless affairs for themselves. They, they couldn't score against uh, Ostrava and they couldn't uh, score against Novi Evaren. Of course, we were also in this competition. Bookies are leaning towards, uh, I don't even know because I've got no bookies odds. Uh, for me, am I leaning towards a draw or a home win here? Uh, yeah, another draw, another 1-1. One, one. How many have I got? Goodness gracious me, the collector's items. Another 1-1 one, one draw. Cannot separate the two sides, can you? Well, back over to Serbia we go now as uh, who do we have going up against Legge Warsaw? It's back up to Pola, that's right. Coming at you against Legge Warsaw, 24th of October. To Pola, three wins the last four. They're on 50% form for them right now, but winless in this competition. That was that one and only defeat at the last four where they lost to Astania. They bounced back with a, a tuna win over FK Jedavisto in the Serbian top flight. Legge Warsaw on the flip side, unbeaten in the last three games, including a win of a Real Beres over in Poland. They, of course, responded after that with a draw on the road against Jagiellonia in the Polish top flight. Again, we'll both will be in action prior to this game. Of course, busy schedules for both. 
Uh, leaning towards uh, maybe an away win here. 3-1 win. Lege also could make it back to back and may maybe put themselves in command for a spot in that top eight. And finally, folks, back over to Cyprus we go as uh, Paphos take on Heidenheim, of course. They're a bit of a bit of a ding-dong affair, this one, because Paphos are the table toppers, or there or thereabouts, are up there in third, up against Heidenheim, also in 13th spot. Both picked up a win early days in this competition. Heidenheim on 50% form for them over in uh, all competitions, all venues, winning three and losing three. Up against Paphos, just one defeat in the last six. They're on 75% form for them. Uh, of course, these two sides did play in a friendly back in August 2023. Oh, square it was there. Paphos, though, after that 4-1 win of a Petro Cup, uh, they picked up 2-1 win over Palaromini in the Cypriot top flight. Heidenheim did beat Olympic Lejlana last time, but they lost at home to Leipzig. Uh, their record on the road ain't too shabby. Picking up a 2 0 win of a Mainz most recently. Difficult one here up against Paphos, uh, who, of course, uh, opened up with, a, with a, an impressive win last time around. This time, though, I think the Germans will take it. 2 0 winners on the road in Cyprus. That, my friends, completes my pack here, guys. It has been a, it's a long old fixture list, big old fixture list. And unfortunately, we are not. We've decided to put an axe in this year's uh, Europa League prediction league. There was only a, four, a few of us took part last uh, this past week, and, and I, I thought I'd, I'd put an end to it. Um, so I do apologise about that. Uh, however, don't forget the Europa League and Champions League do have uh, the old Super Brew uh, for their uh, own respective competitions. But that, my friends, is it. Subscribe, smash the like, catch you later. But today we are done.